Oh, hi, I'm Paul Brody. We're in my shop here. Man behind the camera, Mitch. Seen lately in a hubcap, apparently. We're gonna do an episode on the Aramaki motor. If you don't know Aramaki, from 1960 to 74, they were imported into North America and they were sold as Harley Davidson Sprints. So, Aramaki name is kind of obscure, but you might know them as Harley Sprints. They were available in a 250, 350 version. This is the 350. This motor is 50 years old. And how you tell, on the serial number down here, can you see at the very end, there's a two? That H2, that designates the year 1972. So we're working with a 50 year old motor here. We're basically gonna uh, take this apart. Now, I've had the head and the barrel off and, and the gears were out of here because this used to be my race motor up until, up until 2004. And then I took, I took parts off it and I, I built a big bore motor, a 392. And that's the motor, I did two races on that and then it, it got stolen. So that was gone. So I still have this and what's inside the case, I don't know, cause it hasn't been a part for all those years. Let's just, let's, let's just take it all apart and we'll look at the pieces and I'll explain a little bit what goes into making an Aramaki race motor. On these motors, they had a couple weak points. One was the Kickstarter, but, and it would break the case here and it wasn't well designed, but on a road race motor, you don't use a Kickstarter. And the other weak point was the electrics. They were six volt electrics made in Italy 50 years ago. So that was the problem with these bikes. They usually had an issue with the Kickstarter or the electrics and I used to buy them for a couple hundred bucks for the whole bike and usually they had 5,000 miles on them. That was it. So you can't buy them for 200 bucks anymore. That was back in the early 2000s. So inside here, there's the sprocket. You can see I've drilled holes in it to save some weight. The ignition system goes on here. I'm trying to get a, an updated Lucas Reader out of the UK and, and the pickup and the, and the reluctor it's called. It's a piece of metal that spins around and it sets off the pickup and the rest of the ignition system is mounted under the, on top of the tank under the tank. So this is, this is the inside here. So let's, uh, let's take off the head now. I don't have a piston in here, but I'll show you pistons. When you're working on the cylinder head here, you need to modify a wrench. Can you see how I've modified this, this wrench on my right? So I've changed the angle, I've narrowed it, I've thinned it because if you don't do that, you can't get in here. Can you, can you see right here where this wrench has to go? It goes in there and you can only turn it a little bit at a time. See that? But that works. So it's really hard to get a torque wrench in there. You just have to estimate how much torque you're putting on there. These get 30 pounds and there's no head gasket. So there's the cylinder head. It's got smaller, smaller valve stems. It's been ported. This is a larger intake manifold, longer, a 34 millimeter Amel Mark II carb. Stock size is a 30 at the biggest. So here comes the barrel. Okay, this is stock. If I put a vernier on here, like that, that's just that's just measuring how how long the actual actual muff is. So on the race motor, can you see this? Can you see how that's so much shorter? And the reason it's shorter is because I've got 
acrylo rod in here, which is 135 millimeters, and the stock rod is 145. This is a stock piston. And here I've got a brand new race piston. This is from JE Pistons in California. They make, they make nice stuff. Ooh, it's pretty shiny. So can, can you see how the shape has changed a lot and it's shorter? And the rings are also really skinny as well, so it, it's less, less friction. When you shorten up the barrel, other things have to be shortened too, like the push rods, for example. So these are the, are the stock push rods, and then they have to be made shorter. So how much shorter do they need? Because you need the valve geometry for the rockets. So what I did is I made up an adjustable push rod. This is only for mock-up, just to get the length. Can you see how I've got a six millimeter thread and a nut? And I can move this up and down and I can figure out just how long I want to make the push rods. And then once I know how long they are, I machine this down, I shorten up this, I press this back in. That's just the press fit. This is hardened steel, this is aluminum. So that's the push rods. All right, so we're gonna take off the clutch now. And I took a file and I made up a special tool. See this, see how I sharpen the file? I cut it down a little bit. So this, it, it, it just fits in there. So we're gonna undo these screws. I didn't make them super, super tight because I knew that they were coming off. This is what we made in an earlier episode. I'll be getting some nickel plating done and some anodizing done soon too. So. Okay, we have to take out the clutch plates and it's, I can't get fingers in there like that. So what I've done, this is just welding rod. It's like 035 MIG rod and I bent the ends. I made little masking tape handles here. So it goes in like this and I can pull that out like that. Otherwise, I don't know what you want to do. Okay, that is the clutch pack, basically. I made up this tool here. This is a, a wrist pin. It goes in here, into the rod. So if I have to undo nuts and bolts or, or torque things, this fits over here like that. And because it's got these two pieces, it doesn't fall. On these Zeramaki motors, there is all sorts of special tools you need. If you don't have the special tools, something could go wrong. So I took a couple of the clutch plates. They're kind of on, on the skinny side. I, I TIG welded them together. Can you see that? And then I added on the handle here. So this is what holds the inner clutch hub. And then I can undo the nut. And there we go. And there's a lock washer in there as well. I'll try and get that out. And it doesn't want to come out. It's, I guess it's a really good fit on the splines in there. I've got the nuts which hold the springs on. So I'm gonna thread on three of these. Don't need five. didn't take that much force, but if I didn't have a slide hammer, I couldn't have pulled like that with my bare hands. A special tool that I made years ago. 
and it's a it's a tight fit into here so I need to give it a little a little hit so there's the half inch bar that fits through there so I'll knock this off now So there's the nut. It's got a chamfer on this side, and this is the this is the locking ring. You find which one after it's torqued down. You find which one fits, and you bend it up. Often it, it's hard to get this off when when this has been on a long time. So I made up this. It's a, a clutch plate that fits inside, so it goes in. And then at the back, you turn it, and that's where that's where the slide hammer works again. And you, you, you pull this out. So just another tool. So we'll take off the cover now, and we'll look inside at the gears. I don't have a gasket there but there is normally a gasket. One thing I want you to notice that all these gears are straight cut and the stock gears, all five of them are helical, which makes less noise. But can you see how everything's, everything's wider, especially when I, I show you the other gears. So we'll take out the cam now. And okay, this is, this is an N6 racing cam. This is a stock cam. So if I measure what's known as, as the base circle and I zero it, now you check the lift. So we have a lift of, of 230,000. So if we do the same thing on the, on the race cam here, smaller base circle for some reason. So the last one was 230. That's almost 300. It, it's 298. So this is, it's definitely more of a high performance cam. On the cub, on the camshaft, it had a bushing, a bronze bushing on both ends. So this one here has a ball bearing on this side here. That's the 17 millimeters. And then inside here, there we go. So on the inside of the cam is the hardened thrust washer and then a, a, a needle roller bearing. So these engines are really nicely made. That's why they're always more expensive than the British counterparts, but beautifully made. There we go. I was, I was taking apart engines yesterday upstairs because I needed one of those nuts and I did not have one. And I had a spare motor that had one. So that's where that came from. This is the oil pump right here. So this is the oil pump gear. It's on a little taper. So this is the pinion gear. I'm gonna show you what the puller is that I use. So it's pretty simple really, it's just a plate and there's two Allen screws. On the factory manual it tells you to torque this down, this nut to 35 pounds, but on a race motor where there's more, more power and more torque, you torque it to 65 or 70. That's what I'm told to do. So, so this is how the puller works. There you go, popped. So there's the pinion gear. You, you can see there's a nice taper there. Fits the shaft perfectly. Okay, see here there's, uh, I, got, I got thrust washers in here because this has to be spaced out a little bit. And inside here, very nice, look at these. A couple roller bearings. And actually needle, needle bearings. Okay, as an example of 
what's going on here. This is the race gear out of Germany, beautifully made. If you want to see, well, you know, if you want to hear what a nice piece of, of, of metal this is, it's like a bell. I drilled these holes. That was one of the hardest hardest drill jobs I've ever done. It, it was 2.5 hours to drill and bore these holes because this is such hard metal. It's a very good metal to start with and then it's case hardened. So can you see how much weight got saved here? I want you to also see that, see, see how this gear is smaller in the OD? And then I want you to also see that this gear is larger in the OD. So what has happened is, is the ratio has changed. It's called the primary, it's, it, it's the primary ratio, or the primary gears. So this, this ratio is 2.5 to one. And in the race, race version, this is 2.09. So you get a higher overall gearing. And, and that's why when you're building a racer, it's almost Im impossible if you use a dirt bike engine as your base because the primary ratio is so low. They make it low. This is not a dirt bike ratio even. So this is, what this, what this does is to up your, up your speed on the straightaways. So, and you can see it's also a lot lighter. What we're gonna do now is each of, the, each of the gears in here, there's a set of five. We're gonna weigh stock, five gears and the camshaft, and we're gonna weigh the race and we're gonna see how much of a difference it is. So these are all the stock gears and the camshaft. Basically, it's 2,500, it's so close. Let's call it 2,500. Oops. 1481, so it's less than, it's more than a, a thousand grams lighter, which is over, over two pounds. So that's all weight that is rotational mass that has to be accelerated and unaccelerated. So that's why my little bike is gonna go. Okay, here we go. We're gonna undo some screws. We have to take out some dowel pins. There's dowel pins involved. So there's a bunch of screws on the left side that you have to take out. Oh, it's tight. Yeah, this hasn't been apart since, I don't know, 2003. Very handy having a stand. Highly recommend it to work on a motor. Good. On a Japanese motorcycle or English motorcycle, as you undo the bolts, it comes apart. On an Aramaki, the bearings and the shafts are all a press fit. So you have to you have to pull the case apart and you have to press it together. So this is one of those instances where you really have to have the special tools because if you don't, you can damage your cases. Using screwdrivers and all that, that's a, that's a big no-no on an Aramaki. This is my special tool. It's been a long time, so we'll have to figure this out as we go.
I've blown up an Aramaki motor. I was racing in, in Portland, Oregon, and I knew my motor wasn't healthy. It was sounding kind of sick, but I wanted, I wanted to finish the race, and every lap it was going slower and slower, and I didn't realize that the crank pin had cracked and broken. And then one lap, there was a big bang right by the start finish line and then the bike just didn't go anymore and and the rod broke and damaged the piston the barrel the transmission the electrical system it did a lot of damage so i should have listened to my motor but i didn't that was very expensive so let's see how this works So in that race situation, I guess my ego got in the way. Everyone was passing me. That's how slow I was going. But I wanted to finish the race and that was expensive. Let's see what happens here. Oh, hear that? So, just looking around for any last bolts that are somewhere. And so we've got a little bit of separation right there. So you can see how much force is going into this. If you don't have a tool like this, you can't really take it apart. I think I'm gonna give it a little tap. Mitch's laughing because I jumped. So it's separating here, but it's not separating here. So what do we do for that? I'm improvising now. If I, if I clamp this, oh, okay, look at that. It's, there we go. No. It, it's it's going to come off. Like when I say interference fit, it's, it's a big interference fit in between the shaft and the bearings. They don't put a little bit of a press fit in there. They... So it should come. Because you can see it's got a rock to it. Oh, that's tight. And so what I've done with the transmission on some other ones is I, it, it's a really good press fit. So I put it in the lathe and I take some fine, fine, wet and dry. And I polish a couple tenths off the shaft just to make it easier because on a Japanese motor, it just slides in. It's nothing like this, but this is Italian. So different. Okay, so it's coming a little bit easier now. So it should be almost off the bearings now. There we go. There. I don't know if you saw that, but I felt it. I felt it it gave a little bit, so the transmission shaft wasn't coming, coming out freely. Okay, so the oil pickup is down here. You can see how, how there's a separation in between where the, where the flywheels go and the oil pickup. There's no external oil tank. That's the only filter. And the gasket's peeling off very nicely. So there's the flywheels. It's basically stock acrylic rod. You're supposed to get out of, out of the big end and the rod, you're supposed to get a couple, maybe three seasons. And if I can remember, this rod has one season on it, but 
So you can see here there's a little bit of play but not much. So it's probably in good shape. I need to check the flywheels, see if they run true. So that's basically a teardown. This is five speed here. Stock was four speed. And I think the bearings are all good. Thanks for hanging out in the shop. Hope you've enjoyed this episode. Mitch and I like coffees. If you buy us a few coffees, it'd be perfect. Give us a thumbs up if you liked what's going on here. Please subscribe. Take care. See you next time.